Let's take a look at a hugely important theorem about homomorphisms. So we've got a home, group homomorphism from G to a G prime. Then we create the factor group G mod the kernel of phi. Now I mentioned it earlier that the kernel of phi had to be a normal subgroup, so this makes perfect sense. We're mapping that to phi of G. That is the image of my homomorphism. It's not going to be all of G prime, but only the elements of G prime that are actually mapped to. We're going to define that mapping going from this subgroup to this subgroup by taking the factor group if I'm obtained by multiplying on the left by G to phi of G. And we claim that that mapping is actually an isomorphism that g mod the kernel of phi is isomorphic to the image of g under phi. Before I try and prove this, let's go ahead and look at a simple example. It's very similar to the first example in the last one. Let's say I have phi going from the integers under normal addition to z4 defined by phi of x equals x mod 4. I'm not going to prove that that's actually a homomorphism because it's exactly the same argument that we used in the last video. So let's start thinking about this. The kernel of phi is the set of all things that map to 0. The things that when you take mod 4 and get 0 are the multiples of 4. Now I actually called that thing 4z in the last video, and that's a perfectly way, fine way of writing it. Though another one, which is actually more the notation we've used, is that in z, that's the cyclic subgroup generated by 4. Because remember, we don't only get the 4 plus 4 plus 4, things like that, we also get that for the inverse of 4, so that's where we pick up all the negative multiples of 4. Okay, so let's think about this. What then, if that's my kernel, what is the factor group g mod my kernel of phi? Well, we're going to get, of course, that group we're going to get 1 plus 4, so that would have 1, 5, 9, 13, so on like that, in addition to negative 3, negative 7, negative 11, and so on like that. We're going to get 2 plus 4. We're going to get 2, 6, 10, 14, also negative 2, negative 6, negative 10, negative 14. And 3 plus 4. And that's going to be all of them, because when I do 4 plus 4, that's going to give me back to this coset. So, excuse me, if I look at that now, we're saying that we're going to take a map from this to phi of g, which in this case it is an onto homomorphism, so that's going to be all of z4. So what it's going to be, and let's call this mapping uh, chi. So chi of 4 is just going to be phi of 0 and 0 mod 4 is 0. Chi of 1 plus 4 is going to be phi of 1 which is 1. Chi of 2 plus 4 is going to be phi of 2 which is 2 and chi of 3 plus 4 is going to be phi of 3, which is 3. Now, it's worth noting 
that what if I had something like chi of, say I wanted to do uh, 11 plus 4, because that is a coset, right? So what this says is that this should be equal to phi of 11, and when I do phi of 11, that's going to be 3. Now notice it has to be, because the coset 11 plus 4 is the same thing as the coset is 3 plus 4. So this is going to be a well-defined function here. And now it's not hard to see that if I start thinking about these cosets, 4, 1 plus 4, 2 plus 4, 3 plus 4, when I start adding those cosets using the adding the operation in front, I'm going to basically get z4. Okay, so can we prove this thing in general rather than for a specific example? It really all comes down to creating the proper image. I've got a set G and then we've got a homomorphism going to G prime. At the same time, there's a natural way to go from G to G mod the kernel of that homomorphism, which is just going to be, we'll call that gamma, where gamma of x is just x plus kernel of phi. Or probably should just say x times kernel of phi, because we don't know it's an abelian group, we shouldn't be using plus. And then we've got this chi, like I said here, going from g kernel of phi to g prime. So what we just need to show is that given all this setup, that this is actually an isomorphism. So I've kind of, and it's not exactly proven, but if we use some of the properties in the textbook, it's easy to show that chi is a well-defined function. So I'm not going to go through that. So what we need to show is that chi is one-to-one. -one. We need to show that chi is onto. And we need to show that chi has the homomorphism property. Let's we'll start with it being one to one. Now, actually, I gotta be a little careful here. I said the phi is going for G prime, but when I'm talking about these things, I don't care about all of G prime. I only care about those things that come out of G. And that's important for this being one to one and onto stuff. So let's suppose I've got two different things in phi of G. So I have say, uh, well actually again I'm trying to show that this function is one to one, so suppose that chi of x kernel of phi is equal to chi of y kernel of phi. So that means by this thing that phi of x is equal to phi of y by our definition of what our chi mapping actually is. Now, this isn't enough to show that phi of x or that x equals y because phi is not a one to one map. But that's okay. I don't need x and y to be equal to. What I need is for them both to be in the same coset of the kernel of phi. And that is enough to show that they're in the same coset of kernel of phi. So that means that uh, x kernel of phi is the same thing as y kernel of phi, which is what I need. I need this to be one-to-one. -to, -one. to 
show this is on to, okay, so let's suppose we have some y in phi of g. So that means that there, we, since we know that phi is a homomorphism, and it's certainly onto its image, so that means there is an x in g with phi of x equal to y. But if phi of x equals y, then x kernel of g has to be equal to, well, chi of x kernel of g has to give us y, making it onto. Finally, showing it has the homomorphism property. So, suppose we've got two cosets. We've got x kernel of phi and y kernel of phi. We're going to apply chi to that. Well, so that's the same thing as applying chi to x, y kernel of phi because that's the way our operation works in our coset, our factor group. Chi of that is defined to be phi of x, y. That's the same as phi of x, phi of y because phi is a homomorphism but that's equal to chi of x kernel phi, chi of y kernel phi, and there we have it.